Okay. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, my name is Riyadh Blushi. I'm a co-founder of, I'm one of the co-founders of Open Data Oman. Open Data Oman is a civil society initiative to support the open data movement um, in the country. We provide toolkits and governance tools to entities that would like to publish open data. We also provide a number of curated data sets to um, help people find some of the useful um, uh, Omani open data. As the first person to speak on this very last session on open data, um, I thought I should make some sort of introduction of what open data means. Um, open data is a global movement um, by which governments around the world try to share the data that they have. Um, traditionally, many governments around the world, they, created, they create and collect data as part of the normal way of doing business. So the government knows how many road accidents happen, how many students go to schools, the number of beds they have in hospitals. But after this data is used and collected by the government, the data is usually left stored in box files or um, hard drives. Um, and the understanding is that the government by sharing the data that it already has um, would gain a lot of benefits to itself as the government and to society at, the, as, um, society at large. So when we look at the government itself, um, by opening up the data that the government has, that can help take down silos within the government as in between different entities and within specific institutions. Usually in big ministries, someone might have a specific data set and people in another department might not have that data. And by publishing the data openly, it will help facilitate the movement of data between government entities and within these government entities. Obviously having more data available online would also enable the government to make more informed decisions um, and help make the way we govern the country more effective. Uh, open data is also useful to businesses. Um, as we have seen a lot of speakers here before, um, there are many startups nowadays that need data to do a lot of the things they do. Um, and by giving the government data to the public, we will help these businesses make better decisions and also create apps and products based on the data itself. Uh, civil society as well can, can benefit from government data um, in the way that transparency in general is useful. And it can also help um, the entities responsible for super, like over, overseeing the work of the government, like say the short council or the state audit do their work more effectively. Finally, um, open data can be very useful to academia and researchers um, as these um, uh, uh, parties attempt to find solutions to the challenges that society faces. We hear about um, a lot of researchers struggling with finding data, and this, this initiative is one of these um, tools to make that um, easier. When we talk about open data, we talk about a very specific kind of data publication. Um, and that, that the data that the government publishes as open data should be technically and legally open. And when we talk about technical openness, we mean that the data that the government publishes should be available in a machine readable format that is structured and available for download in bulk. Um, and when we talk about legal openness, we talk about data that not, not only is available for people to use, but the data should also be available for reuse for any commercial or non-commercial purposes. Um, so for example, we've seen the government do a, a great job sharing information about um, COVID and the number of cases and like, you know, on a daily basis, but that data is not open because it is published as JPEG files on Twitter. It's not available, it's not machine readable. Um, uh, and like, obviously it's not structured. And even with something like say the Tarasad app, which is an app, that app is also is not technically open because you cannot download the data out of the app. So that those initiatives, even though they are open, uh, there are like they publish data to the public, but that data is not technically open. When we talk about open data, it's publishing data in a very specific format. Fortunately, um, we don't need to wait for 2040. There are already a few initiatives where the government publishes um, open data in a manner that complies with these standards to a great degree. And the two main um, platforms for this are Amanda2M. This is a portal created by the MTCIT um, that has links to all the main data sets published by the government and also um, some resources to help government entities publish, uh, publish data, their data openly. Uh, there is also another portal by the NCSI, which is data.gov.om. 
Um, and this portal primarily publishes statistical information, but it has a lot, a lot of uh, different data sets that complies with all the technical standards of open data. These two portals are the main national outlets for open data. But we also have many other government entities um, uh, that publish uh, open data. So I, I don't know if people are aware of these. So we have some, we have like, I'm not gonna name all of them. You see, you see them on the screen, but we have everything from the Ministry of Finance to the Tendi Board. And the way these ministries publish their data, um, uh, it is useful, but some of it leaves something to be desired. Uh, but we have any, for example, the Ministry of Finance, they are responsible for publishing the budget. So if you wanna know how much money each government entity is given every year, that data is available online. And they also publish how much money each ministry spent at the end of the year. Not only they publish this as a PDF, which is the Royal Decree that comes out, but they also publish it as Excel file that are structured properly. So you can look at the numbers and do um, uh, uh, analytics to understand how the government is spending. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, we have something like the Tendi Board that has an electronic system for tendering. And their open data initiative um, is, is part of that system where with a click of a button, they would pump the data out for you to give you the specific information you're looking for. So there is a lot of like um, uh, open data efforts by the government itself. And by looking at these, uh, at these entities, I think there are between 50 to 60 government entities. And we, what we see in front of us is almost 25%. So one out of every four government entities actually publishes um, open data. Um, but my presentation today is not about these entities um, that publish data. Um, I would like to, to, to discuss why the government, when it thinks about this mandate for publishing open data, should think beyond classic ministries um, because of two things. Uh, the government has been doing a lot of like incorporation and a lot of privatization. And by incorporation, um, I mean those practices where the government decides um, suddenly to deliver a certain public function through a company instead of doing the function through the ministry itself. And pri by privatization, I mean it's the practice where the government asks a private party totally outside the government to deliver this function. Um, and the, re the result of this is that the data that used to be in those proper government entities, like a ministry, would somehow suddenly become owned by a company, which is owned by the government, or by a third party um, private sector. The government is doing this for a number of reasons. One of them might be efficiency. So the government says, uh, uh, because of the uh, red tape we have on say tendering or employment, they might create a specific company to be able to attract like talent to pay to pay on a scale outside the civil service code, service, civil service code or in a way that operates much more efficiently by not being bound by the um, by the financial law or the tender law. Um, and this has been going on for years and years and years. So if people remember, Amantel used to be at some point the actual government before it became GTO and before it became Amantel. Um, OPWP, the uh, power company was the government. Um, Haya Water used to be the government. BA used to be the government. And those things are not things that used to happen in the past. Even up to this year, the government is still spinning off parts from the core function of the government as companies. So this year, we had the Muscat Securities Market that became the Muscat Stock Exchange. It used to be a government ministry and now suddenly it's a company. And we also have the new PPP law and the privatization law where it becomes very clear that the government plan is to try to outsource as much as it can of its function to these private entities. From an open data point of view, this means that a lot of the data that the government has been publishing, as I showed you in the previous image, is likely to become in the possession of, of these entities. And like I said, right now we have maybe 25% of all government entities publishing open data, but almost none of the government owned companies publish open data. And does anybody know how many government owned companies are there? Any guess? So there are between 50 to 60 government entities. How many government owned companies do you think are out there? Yes, but even like, so we know PDO, 
I'm going to tell partially, but how many does someone know? Like how many are there? The, the thing is we don't have open data. So nobody actually knows for a fact how many government owned companies are there. But according to WAF, there are 240 government owned companies uh, where at least the government has 50% shareholding. And I don't know if this talks about like one level below where like maybe a government owned company owes another company and that company owes another company. So if we targeted these government owned companies the same way we target the ministry proper, we have 25% of the government ministries publishing. And if we manage to get 25% of those 240 companies to publish their open data, that would significantly contribute to the, to the amount of data um, that is available for say small businesses, researchers, civil society, and even the government itself. Um, uh, but I think that when, if we want to really start the, this initiative and start thinking about sharing the data owned by companies, um, I think we should focus on two specific categories, not only government owned companies. The first one is government owned companies, which is like a legal entity owned by the government, but also public utility companies. Um, so for government owned companies, the justification why we should be entitled to this data is that essentially this is the government. Even um, in the previous panel, someone was referring to PDO as the government, even though PDO technically it's a company, it's not, it's not, it's not the government. Um, but in many cases, government owned companies are essentially a legal fiction. It is the government, same employees, same building, doing the same function. The Muscle Securities Market, within a single day, it's so, somehow it just became a company. So the fact that those, this is just like a legal fiction, that should not stop us from having the right to access this data. Um, in many ways also, this, these companies are funded by the government. So if we are paying for this, either directly as like, you know, the government or maybe us as individuals um, to our taxes, we should be entitled um, to have the data, access to the data that these companies own. Uh, public utility companies are a bit different because those are not necessarily owned by the government. Um, so if a company provides electricity or water or even like telecom, um, those functions are extremely vital to the operation of society and they are usually very heavily regulated. So for example, like Vodafone, it's new license that came out by Royal Decree, just to show you how fundamental this, this function is to society. Um, and on that basis, due to the importance of this function and how it tightly integrates with other things, say as a telecom company, you need to work with like the sewage company to be able to pass your like, you know, fiber. Um, or if you're like the, the electricity company, you also need to somehow work with the water company if you wanna do the piping. So due to the tightly integrated nature of these companies, it's, it's very important for them to be heavily regulated. And for that very reason, we need to have access to the data. Um, uh, but even like when you think about it, like the fact that these government, uh, those companies, whether owned by the government or delivering public functions, there are benefits to everyone in having their data a bit more open. So for us as a government, if we would like to um, have a better oversight over how the way these companies that we own or the companies that run our core utilities, having open data would make it easier for us to, to supervise them and, and evaluate their performance. Um, as businesses themselves, um, I think there are benefits on having your data a bit more openly. Uh, for example, we have a lot of government owned companies and they are trying to have consolidation or integration um, to make them run more smoothly. And somehow if this data was open, that will certainly make the integration and operation of these companies much more effective. Um, finally, um, I think we can think of open data by these companies as some sort of CSR. We see companies paying money to say, establish, create like football uh, playing fields or like, you know, do many other things that seem to be beneficial to society. So why can't we think of sharing data by these companies as part of their CSR, CSR um, campaign because of all the benefits that everybody would gain um, from having open data. Um, so that is my argument in general of why we should have uh, open data published, not only by the government proper, but by also government owned companies and public utility companies. And we have an example. So Mwasalat is, technically in between all these sectors, it's a government owned company and it also provides a public utility, which is the transportation and the buses. So Mwasalat does publish open data. Sorry, the image is not clear. Um, 
but this is supposed to say open data at the end. <laughs> so, um, so if you go to their website, there is actually an effort by a single company um, uh, to publish open data. Uh, and the reality is this happened for a very specific reason, because the government of Oman cares about many international indicators. Um, and some of these indicators require publishing transportation data. So the government spoke to Mwasalat and they asked them to publish um, this data set to improve Oman's ranking um, in uh, e-government and um, electronic transformation. Uh, but I think we can, there are many other opportunities um, for us as like as a community to have access to um, uh, to have access to open data published by these companies in a way that would be useful to a lot of people. So for example, for we just had this example from Wasalat, but imagine if transportation data such as the airport. So the airport is managed by the Oman Airports Company um, and they have a lot of data about the passengers, how many people come in, the flights that, that land, the flights that depart. And imagine if this data was available through an API where anyone would be able to use it free of charge. Um, that on its own, obviously will have a lot of applications. Um, in the energy sector, um, we spoke about sensors um, and there are a lot of like companies here that have a lot of data. And imagine if we have access to the data on the consumption per area or per season or per hour and the kind of intelligence we can, we can obtain through this. Finally, even in tourism, the government owns Umran, which is the holding company uh, of many of their tourism operations. Um, so imagine if we can have data about the number of tourists who come, the capacity of hotels, um, and, the, and, the, and the traffic of tourists into and out of the country. Um, those are like a few examples of how I think open data can, can have good applications um, using existing data that we have. The situation right now is that the government has something called the open data policy, which was issued by the MTC IT, the Ministry of Transport, IT and Communications. Uh, this open data policy actually already encompasses the government and government owned companies up to a certain shareholding. But the reality is this was issued by the MTC IT as a policy. This is not a law, this is not a regulation. And the MTC, MTC IT has no legal mandate over government owned companies. So the MTC IT can't go to PDO and say, hey, we want to know the number of accidents you have on like in, on rig sites or something. Um, so the policy exists and it only encompasses government owned companies. Um, it has no legal mandate and I don't believe like it has no legal power because it was not issued by royal decree. Um, and the MTC IT does not have the mandate to even order anything from um, from government-owned companies or public utility companies. So what, what I think should happen is that we need to have some sort of legally binding instrument for us to make this happen. Um, there needs to come some sort of royal decree that says uh, this is the national open data framework and it applies to the government, government-owned companies and public utility companies. So there is no question about whether or not we have the power to ask for this data. Um, it might sound a bit um, outrageous. We're saying, I want to take the data by these companies and public utility companies, but we actually do have an example. So in Oman, we have a law called uh, the Records and Archives Law. This is the law that regulates the National Archive. So we have this government entity that collects documents uh, to keep them for future generations. This law is legally binding and it already applies to government-owned companies and public utility companies. So the National Records and Archives Authority can order any entity, like any company, any public utility company to hand over their documents. And those companies, like they, they cannot say no. So we do have an example where those, the documents held by these entities is already considered to be public documents that people have the right to see. But obviously the National Records and Archives law is a very different law. We, you have the right to ask for the documents as the government, but you cannot share them with the public except after I think 50 to 70 years because the documents might have sensitive information or commercial information. Um, but I think this can be the basis for making this argument um, and asking for open data to be published by government-owned companies and public utility companies. This was my presentation. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm available for any questions. So thank you, Dr. Yada Belushi, co-founder of, uh, of Open Data Oman, uh, who gave us a lot of uh, useful information about what is open data, uh, what are the benefits uh, of having it, uh, and all the opportunities uh, that we can all, uh, as a society, improve um, uh, going forward. Uh, Saif Al-Jahwari, I'm uh, working for BP Oman. 
A question is around, you've mentioned an example of muasalat. Uh, for example, they're sharing some of their data. Uh, what we see um, as, uh, uh, as from, from, from the individual perspective, not really from, um, from data analytical, but we can tell in some of the services provided, for example, by, by muasalat, maybe this data is being shared for the public, but actually, is it being used, utilized for their services to be improved? That's a question we, we take back to Mosalat and others. And uh, from the public, we can see, for example, they are running the ferry uh, services in some of the places. And uh, we can tell, do they really understand the data, especially on holidays, people utilizing those services? Do they improve their services? Do they add to it? From the publicly, when I see it, I don't see really there's a, a proper utilization of this data uh, in, in, in Muasalat. That's an example. Others could be the same, government entities and some other companies. Maybe they share the information, but we would like really to see uh, more utilization. Thank you. Um, uh, I agree. There are many, many government entities that do publish some sort of data, uh, but there is very little evidence of use, even like publicly. So I've showed you examples of more than like 13 ministries publishing data and two national portals for data. But there is very little evidence that anyone in the government or outside is actually making good use of them. That could be because the data is not published in a proper way. So they publish random pieces. They're not structured. They're not up to date. They're incomplete. They're not clean. Um, and that's why they're not being used. And I think an aspect of it is uh, maybe marketing. Not a lot of people know that this data exists. And at times, because you do not have users of data, the government does not have the incentive to publish uh, to publish data because there is very little evidence. So it's like a chicken and egg problem. When it comes to Mossadat, uh, like I said, they were they were asked to publish this data to comply with an international standard. The data that they have online is basically a timetable for the buses. Um, we don't know if it's up to date. They only publish it once so that we tick the box internationally. Uh, and I don't know if there is evidence that the data is being used, like you mentioned. Thank you so much, Dr. Riyad.